Hello aviators, you're joining with the Aerotechnician's YouTube channel. Today I'm going to bring you guys a well-asked question, which is how to become a base engineer. So without further ado, let's get to the video. This is Adam Well, first of all, I should thank uh, for people who helped me to make this video. I'm not a space engineer and I'm not from America. So there's a lot of people who helped me to find the information research on it. And I thought like since it's engineering related, I should bring this to you guys because I've been asked many times how to become a space engineer. So, well, this is it. So let's start. So in order to become a space engineer, uh, there's one main thing you need to have a degree qualification because space engineering or space space itself, it doesn't work only with engineering. There's, pe there's, there's space for people who has electronic backgrounds, there's logistics, supply chain and commercial. There's a whole variety of stuff you can do in space and also other jobs so but since this is an engineering channel i'm going to just focus on aerospace engineering and how to get a job as an aerospace engineer the main requirement or the first requirement would be you need an aerospace engineering degree this can also be a mechanical engineering degree or if, if you're into electronics you can also have electronic degree doesn't matter this is the main a uh, single most important requirement to become a space engineer so now you know how to become a space engineer is it or is it not well it's not that simple uh since i'm talking about going into nasa and spacex this video is going to be around how to go to america how to do a degree in america and how to fulfill the requirements to become a space engineer don't get me wrong there's other space agencies as well which is space uh esa which is european space agency and there's a lot more in other countries as well who works on this space research but this video is going to be about america or how to have that dream of going to america being a space engineer and calling yourself an engineer at nasa or spacex we'll go to my linkedin page and then see what are the uh, positions available so let's just say now you have a degree or you are you you are after your high school or advanced levels looking to find information about being a space engineer or if you are at that point you have already completed i think this will be very useful so okay now you can see my um, linkedin profile i've gone into jobs it's really easy to find a job uh, through linkedin uh, I don't know whether I've done an English video on this and if not I'll do soon and you just go to jobs and let's just search NASA or SpaceX so NASA as you can see uh, there's an electronic engineer's position AST data hardware systems whatever that means and then you got a summary about the job you're gonna do the qualifications and the requirements it says basic education requirement to qualify the position specialized experience that has equipped with particular blah blah you can read it at your own pace so it has a lot of stuff to read now i want to jump into spacex uh linkedin page because i need to show you one particular thing which caught my attention and i think this is this this is the single most important thing that you need in order to get a job in in nasa or spacex or in any space um company in united states so let's go down so this is a satellite mechanical engineer again looks the same as nasa's one responsibilities basic qualification bachelor's degree uh or stem discipline now if you if you don't know what stem is uh, I've, I've explained a loads of times on my other videos stem is science tech uh, technology engineering and mathematics stream so 
An experience with CAD, FEA, software packages can be a professional academic, oh, academic as well, or a hobby setting, which is really convenient because there's lots of kids who learn how to use uh, these so softwares like SolidWorks, um, AutoCAD, Cartier um, in their school years and then um, and also one, one year of experience in mechanical and electromechanical design. So this is for an experienced person. So I'll tell you how to get this one year experience if you still after your high school or looking to get into um, space industry. So preferred skills and experience, master's degree in engineering, they prefer them, which is not really mandatory. So, and you got additional requirements as well. And also you get a good compensation, which is 95,000, which is really good. So, so that that's what, but I want to point out this part, ITAR. What is ITAR requirement? So according to ITAR requirements, you must be a US citizen, lawful permanent resident of the US. So now this is the point where they divide United States and rest of the world. Because in order to become a space engineer or a satellite engineer or any position in NASA or SpaceX, you are an American citizen. Now, I'm not gonna stop my video. This is where my friends help me out. I've asked two people and I'm really thankful for their time and consideration. So, so they have told me how to gain the American citizenship step by step, as you can see on the screen now. So to start with, you apply for a STEM degree. Just keep in mind this video, this flowchart is for a student who is looking to start their career, who's looking to start their first degree. If you're a master's engineer or you have a qualifications to a master's level, it might be worth you looking to other ways of getting the American citizenship. This video is only for a person looking to complete his bachelor's. But if you're a person who haven't who have completed his bachelor's but looking to do his master's, you can still use this flowchart in order to uh, gain entry to United States. So, number one, apply for a STEM degree program. As I said, STEM degree programs are science, technology, engineering, mathematics. But in our case, we are aeronautical, aerospace minded people. So we need aerospace degree or a mechanical engineering degree. After that, you need to apply as an international student, you need to apply for your F1 student visa. So this was pointed to me in my other Sri Lankan video. So when you have an F1 student visa, you have to work one year on campus. Now I'll, I'll drop down the link on the description, which states what are the different uh, student visas available and what you can and cannot do. So come, you complete your bachelor's. Oh, there's one more thing. Uh, there's one, one thing called OPT, which is optional practical training. So you are eligible as a student who study in the United States to work one year. But being a STEM student, you can extend this one year for two more years. So altogether, you will get three years of uh, OPT. So you can apply for that. And this is where you work in the industry. Now, I told you, right, like you can't go to NASA or SpaceX with a student visa, you need to be a citizen. So this is this time, what I would do, or what I recommend you to do is like go to NASA's career page or the SpaceX career page and look at, take few engineering positions and look at the skills they require. At this time of three years, I would look into brushing up these skills. As, as I saw in the other one, they asked for CAD. So if you're not a student who haven't have done CAD, or if you're a student who have only done SOLIDWORKS, might as well give a try on one of the other. This is where you go into the industry, find a place, you work, and then if if you prove that you're more than capable, you have the correct attitude, you have the correct discipline, the company might even sponsor you for the H-1B visa, which is the work visa. So that's our next step. So after three years of OPT, if the company like to sponsor you, they will file a H-1B so you can have the H-1B visa. So once the H-1B is approved, you can work for three extra years in the U.S. and apply for a green card. After your education, you have been in, in the USA for six years. So 
in during this six years you have gained your experience from the company you work and also as i said you have brushed up your skills the extra skills that nasa always basics require you have built them in and now the next part is you will be eligible to apply for the naturalization process which is aka citizenship so once this citizenship is done you have all the necessary requirements for the to apply for nasa or spacex go there you have a bachelor's degree you have your experience you you know you have seen their skills you have brushed them up or you have improved your skills or you have learned new skills and you go six years and you got the citizenship so now you are perfectly able to apply for a rewarding career at nasa or spacex so so this is what i wanted to bring to you hope you have gained something out of this video if you have do subscribe to my channel share this video and like my video if you really think this video would help someone and the qr code here is the qr code that you can contact me on you got my instagram facebook and other details so you can use one of these to contact me that's it then so i hope you have gained something I'll bring a video soon. Till then, keep fixing.